Welcome back to the channel everybody. We've got a fun video for you today. We just got back from our trip in Florida and we got to do a ton of different things but Maverick could not stop talking about something that we saw while we were out fishing with cameraman Ron from YouTube. He took us out on his boat. I will leave a link down in the description to his channel. Y'all go check him out, subscribe, let him know that we sent you. But we've got some super cool footage from us going down there and going fishing and then some stuff around the farm that we're gonna show you. And we're expecting some babies. It is bright and early, it's 5.30 a.m. I've got to go wake up Maverick. Me and him are going on an extremely big adventure today. And y'all are along for the ride. So I'm going to go grab him, bring him in here, and we're going to head down the trail. We've got an, about an hour and a half drive ahead of us. Whew. Yeah, hopefully he'll sleep a little bit. It's still dark. It'll be dark for another hour at least. So hopefully he'll just fall back asleep, get a little bit more sleep, and we'll get there quick. Good morning, Maverick. Say hi, everybody. Hi, what are we going to go do? Fish. What? We're going fishing? Catch a big one? Oh, yeah. We are excited. So that's right. We are headed fishing in Pensacola, Florida. But on our way here, guys, we had the craziest. I've never experienced this before. We were driving. It was still dark. We're on uh, just the main road like Destin Pensacola on the island and uh, a seven foot gator ran out right in front of us thankfully there wasn't a car next to us and I was able to just swerve into the other lane and barely missed it keep left onto East Gregory Street but it was the most crazy thing I have ever experienced it was I, first of all, I think it's the first like alligator out of the water that I've seen in the wild. Well, that's not true. First time like driving a car and seeing an alligator, I guess. Like it was like it was a deer running across the road, except I didn't see any alligator crossing signs, so I don't know what was crossing there. But uh, yeah, it was crazy, and we almost probably totaled our car, but thank goodness we didn't. Y'all, we made it. I gotta get Maverick dressed. I just brought him in his jammies because I was hoping he would sleep a little bit more. He didn't sleep anymore. You ready, Freddy? Look. What did you get? Dusty Cropper Pajamas. Dusty Cropper Pajamas for your birthday, huh? Yeah. So we did a little early birthday celebration with all of his cousins. His birthday is actually the 21st, so it's in like a week or so. But he got those jammies, and he absolutely loves them. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff, and we're going to run down to the boat dock. He's already here and in the water. We made it. We made it. What shirt are you wearing? It's fishing Your what? It's fishing <laughs> That's what he calls his fishing shirt. Hey, come here. Come hold my hand, bubby. So we are here. We've got all of our stuff. I've got the diaper bag, the camera stuff. Hopefully we're going to get some good footage for y'all. Hopefully we don't get skunked. Um, that would be a very uh, short video for y'all. That is a big truck. Okay, come on. Your feet are hurting in those shoes. He got a bunch of blisters. I'm going to carry him. All right, y'all. Well, we made it. We are in the middle of, well, not quite the middle of the ocean, but pretty close to the middle of the ocean. <laughs> we're, we're not even on the ocean side, Crandall. We're just the Gulf of Mexico and then the bay. Well, I guess I should have looked at the map. I thought we were actually on. I guess we are surrounded by land. Oh, yeah. We're, we're still on the bases. You're, there we you're, go. We haven't even made it out to the Gulf yet. <laughs> so this is Ron with Cameraman Ron on YouTube. What's up, guys? And, uh... He, I work. We came out here, you guys know, for our family trip, and I reached out to him and said, Hey, we'd love to go do some fishing, get together with you guys. And so he was kind enough to say, Hey, yeah, let's go out, let's go do some fishing. So we're going to show you guys a little bit of fishing, but Ron, go ahead and tell everybody kind of a little bit about your channel. Yeah, so we do all saltwater fishing here in the Florida Panhandle. We do some traveling down to South Florida. Um, it's pretty much everything fishing, all kinds of saltwater species, a little bit of freshwater here and there, but mostly a lot of a lot of tummy time and a lot of mangrove snappers so that's that's what we do around here like i said we're excited to be here we've got some lines in the water we caught a couple little fish earlier this morning and uh we're trying to get something a little bit bigger we're trying to upgrade so we got uh, it's me and maverick out here today as you guys know yeah. yeah tell everybody what you're doing you're eating some pretzels and what are we doing on the boat Eating fish. Mm -hmm. 
So we're using live shrimp and another live bait, basically. Live pinfish. What's that? Live pinfish. Live pinfish. Live pinfish and uh, shrimp. And we'll uh, we'll keep y'all updated as uh, as we kind of go on. Hopefully, we'll get into something good. Y'all, there's a dolphin right here. I barely missed it. Let's see. He'll come up. He won't come up over here because he won't let himself get pinned in between his boat. Now. Oh, and there. Bang. He'll come Maverick, up did up you see it? Over there yeah. somewhere. So, if he comes up over here, I would be thoroughly surprised. You have that one named? No, we only have one, half big one. <laughs> um, there is one out in the bay, but he was a rescue dolphin. And a boat motor got him. Half of his, half of his tail. Oh, there he is. He's just waiting. Y'all, look at this. He, that's, just, that's a big boy, too. That's a huge. big dolphin, yeah. Maverick, do you see it? You see him right here, Mav? He's right there under the water. Yeah, you go. We're getting into him now. Well, we might be back on the same fish. We'll see. It felt good when it hit. I'm calling mangrove. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that is going to be Crandall's first, first mangrove, mangrove snapper. snapper. You're gonna hey, be a, yeah. you're gonna be a little short. Be careful because those dudes will actively try to bite you right there. Okay. Oh, and so they actually got teeth. They have okay. teeth. Yes, very much so. If they latch. Oh, they definitely. Can. Yeah, if they latch onto your finger, man, it's gonna be a bad day all around. Me getting stopped here so we can show the teeth. Oh yeah, look at him. Yeah, he's, he's mad. still eating that hook. Yeah, he's he's really wanting to bite us right now, so. What's the best way to do it? Just yeah, hold this for a second. I'll get him off for you. We'll let Ron. <laughs> so the size limit on these is 12. Ten oh, 10 inches. 10 inches here. Yeah. Very, very beautiful fish. Though. Look at that thing, y'all. Yeah, that's a pretty colored one, too. Really pretty. Yeah, he's got some nice colors. You want to see him, Maverick? Check that fish out, man. Look at that thing. What color is it? What color? Red. And green and brown. And he's got some blue up there by his eyes. You see he's the got blue? All kinds of colors. All right. Okay. Uh, you want to hold him for a picture or anything? Oh, we may as well. All right, here we go. We're gonna put him back. Like nothing even happened to him. Unless a shark came up and ate him right in front of you, that'd been funny. If you guys saw the other clips, that do we had a dolphin when we were in at the dock, and it would literally just come up, and it was sitting right next to the boat, hoping that we would feed it, and who knows how many fish we threw back that it just uh, maybe snapped on. <laughs> All right, y'all, here we go. Let's we'll see what we got. Golly, more pinfish. What is happening right now? Okay, we just caught like 50 of these. Oh, yeah, we just, caught a uh, bunch of these. At the dock. Yeah, at the dock. So, not what we were hoping for right there at all. That's all right. We'll give it another dangle. He's uh, one of those special fish that gets off by himself. Yeah, if you'd give him, the, if you had a little bit more of a belly to give him, that's how you hold on to him. <laughs> we, give, we give him tummy time with CMR around these parts. That's what they're expecting. Yeah, nice. There we little, are. Little belly cuda, AKA pinfish. This is what we're using for bait on that other line. Only a much smaller one, yeah. Much smaller. <laughs> That's why we can't get the fish to bite. There's That's too many of them out here. Many. Yeah, they're like, yeah, well, we got heaps of these. Well, I didn't know how Maverick was going to do, but I guess the week at the beach just kind of wore him out. And he's, uh, are you just relaxing? Yeah. Is it pretty comfy? You rocking you to sleep? You going to take a nap? No. You got to talk louder. No. No nap? So we're uh, doing the fun part of fishing, which is the waiting. It's also the reason why Marcy doesn't fish. <laughs> <laughs> we gave it our best shot, kept fishing for about an hour and a half or so, and it was slow. And we will tell you guys why here in just a minute, but we had such a great time. Maverick absolutely loved it. He just loved sitting on the boat, hanging out. That's the nice thing about boat fishing is you get to stay occupied doing other things at the same time as fishing instead of just sitting on the bank and having nothing to do. Just chilling. You like it? Yeah. Whoa. Well, we kind of 
struck out on the bigger fish, but we did catch a lot of little ones, huh, Mavi? Yeah. Did you have a fun time? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good time, huh? Yeah. So, Ron, tell them uh, what our fishing predicament was with the tides. Yeah, we were just on a slack tide today. There was no water movement whatsoever, and it makes it really, really tough to catch big fish. They just, they like moving water, and we were having the conversation out there of, you know, whether you should fish a falling tide or a rising tide, and it depends on who you talk to, is what I tell Crandall. It's, it, you know, there's everybody's got their own opinion on it, but the one thing I do know is you have to have moving water, and when the water's just not moving, um, it's tough to catch those big fish out there, man. It really is. If we'd had a blue crab, probably would have had a shot at a big nasty, but with no blue crabs and only live bait on board, they just were not interested in eating it this morning. It just didn't seem like it. Yeah, so it's funny because I was, I was asking, I was like, so I've always assumed high tide, or like incoming tide would be better, like bringing the fish in or whatever. And it's like, no, incoming good, outgoing good, just slack tide's bad. And that's exactly what we got. So and we're, we're on what we call a neat tide. So no, normally a slack tide only lasts an hour or two, but today, um, because of where the moon's at, I don't know exactly how it all works, but it's just like a flat tide all day um, with really no high tide, no low tide to speak of. So it's just straight flat all day just gives you no water movement whatsoever and i mean like we probably wouldn't have even had to put the boat in anchor lock out there if we didn't want to the trolling motor was not doing much we were just sitting there it was, wasn't moving that's crazy yeah so there's so much stuff i mean this is my first time going on a boat out on the ocean we've done a little bit if you guys saw one of our other videos we did a little bit of shore shark fishing in galveston um and we actually caught a couple decent sized sharks they were like four foot which was pretty cool but there is so much more that goes into ocean fishing than lake fishing where you just kind of show up and start casting. Casting, <laughs> hope for the best, yeah. Let me see. As you can see, we had an absolute blast. It was a bummer we didn't get any of the big fish, but you know, that's how fishing goes. Same with hunting, everything on the outdoors, it's hit and miss. So it is what it is. By the way, if y'all missed our last video, it was our complete kitchen reveal. It is completely done. It's kind of a mess right now. But if y'all missed that video, go check it out. We are gonna go out now and take care of the animals. And we've got a couple of changes that we have to make. All of the animals over here, obviously the chickens are the only ones in this other pen, have completely grazed this entire pasture down to the dirt. And the problem is, is we didn't get rain for like two months three months and it was 100 degrees so everything died they ate it all that kind of stuff so it's time to give them a little bit more grass and uh, hopefully give some of this other area a little bit of time to regrow so what we're going to do is you can see the whale house way down yonder um, i'm going to grab one of the fence rolls from right here we're going to make this just a single roll of chicken wire um, just because the chickens well right now they're actually free ranging so We've, I've been letting them free range, so they haven't even been using this pen. So I figure let's put the fence to good use. Um, and the other thing is we need the space for these animals to go out that way. So I would, now you might ask, well, why don't you just move this fence around? I still want them to have access to the pond. So that's kind of why we're like, I'm just going to leave this whole area and we're just going to add it and take it out into the green pasture over there. If you see in my arm, that's poison ivy, y'all. This is the second time this month that I've gotten poison ivy. It's absolutely miserable. I got it on that arm and on this arm and on my face, like by my eye and on my chin a little bit. Absolutely terrible. I do not recommend it. Thankfully, one of you guys, the subscriber Barb, sent us some stuff for it. So I'm going to try that out and see if it'll help. I literally, like four or five days ago, got over the last poison ivy that i had it lasts forever it lasted like two and a half weeks and then i literally got this like the next day so absolutely sucks but i'm gonna go ahead we're gonna turn off this i'm gonna get this reorganized i'm gonna rip down this section of fence and that's gonna go over there let's go ahead i'm gonna get it moved we'll see how this goes i do i did just realize i don't have any gas for the lawnmower so I'm gonna have to go get gas for the lawnmower to uh, lawnmow the path. The thing with this electric fence is that um, if it comes in contact with the grass, it will short it out. And so to prevent that, you obviously just mow the grass and uh, keep it from touching the fence. Check that out, looks great. So I gotta move the charger over here still, but I'll just hook that up later. Got this whole roll. We're gonna go ahead and go put it over there. This is where things are about to get exciting. So I'm gonna open up this whole edge right here of the fence to add this new section of fence. 
out hopefully around the well house i think we'll have enough so marcy's gonna try and keep all the animals from escaping lovely do so, i have some stick or something let's swing? well let's put out some food for them oh. and then they'll probably be okay if i can do it really quick i'll put out the food you get ready to do it okay because you're gonna have to go in the pen with all <gasps> wait what yeah marcy you're pissed they're fine they're not gonna they're maverick and crandall's pets um actually the ducks aren't bad there's no chickens in here which makes i mean there's the two roosters but i guess Zan isn't that bad i've petted him before it's really just a turkey but i don't know how to get in Cute myself. Oh. The lid wasn't on, Crandall. It wasn't He got mad because evidently Maverick and I left it open. Oh, Suzanne. Spread it out like in a line or whatever. Kind of spread out. All right, hurry, hurry. hurry. Zan, leave me alone. No, Zan. Zan, eat that bucket. Crandall, Zan's trying to get me. Zan, stop it. You're a bully. See guys, Zan, the thing about him is all those other ones eat. He just like walks. Zan, I'm about ready to get ya. No? Okay. I got them all eating. Okay, what do I do now? Look, I even have my shepherd's hook. Obviously, I would never point this side at them. I'd use this side. But, got my shepherd's hook. They're fighting. Oh, it's hot out here. He's going awfully slow. Are you guys willing to place bets on how many get out? I say two. I say two get out. Hopefully... None. Oh, but I say two. Zan's looking around. Hope you're hurrying. The thing is, is the ducks come in and out. So if ducks get out, I'm okay. Yeah, I think all of the ducks can come in and out because they just slip right under the fence. We could give them new water today too. It rained yesterday and one of them got in the freaking thing with muddy all over them. But they also have their nice pond down there which is helpful. Okay, how's Crandall doing? It's really hot. It's really quite hot. And I want to back up and be in this shade, but I don't want them to come closer. Look, because they're all, they know I put the food everywhere. They're all just running around. I'm sure you guys love watching our animals just eat. Here's Crandall. I told him. Crandall, build half the fence. And he just said, well, I don't know how long it's going to go out. But I think he could have started over there. 
And then the nut. Oh! Zane, you scared me! No, we're not we're not playing today. You smell my stick? Zan, those are some big horns. You used to be friendly, but then we put you in here and I don't know if you're friendly anymore. And I watched you pee on yourself today, so I'm not gonna pet you because that beard is gross. I'm almost out of food! Do I give him more? He didn't say anything. What, oh, Ducky? Ducky, come down. Let's go this way. Ducky, Ducky, Ducky. I think we have eight ducks. One. Oh, if you want to know their names, that one's Emerald. That one's Sean. That one's Lightning McQueen. Um, then we have Hallie and Annie. And these three little ones we haven't named. You guys, it's not long enough. We just got asked to do a petting zoo, and I was like, I don't think any of our animals are friendly. Obviously, I would never hit them with a the stick, but let's see. Maybe one of the mama goats will let me touch them. Come here, goaties. Zan, you peed on your face. See, the goats aren't that friendly, and that's okay. The only reason they aren't friendly is because they aren't. These ducks should be the friendliest. But, oh no, I left my stick and now the, the thing is, is these mama goats, they're not gonna wander. Well, they would wander, but I think I could chase them faster. Uh, I don't have my stick, Zan. Can he sense fear? I think he can. Look! I bent down and picked it up and he walked away. He knew I wasn't prepared to deal with him. And I know what you're all thinking. Marcy, he's just your goat. He's your goat. Guys, he's a goat that like, he bucks and bronks. I mean, he's a very, he's a goat in rut. Let's just say that. Hi, Domino! We've been out here for 10 minutes. He's taking Crandall a mighty long time. I've been shepherding them. You've just been listening to me babble. And then, of course, we have our chickens. We have Rip Slinger and... Oh, shoot. I can't remember its name. Oh, Cockadoodle. Okay, I don't know if it's Cockadoodle or Cockadooter. Cockadooter, that's its name. Because Maverick couldn't say Doodle. So it's Cockadooter and um, Grip Slinger. And of course, you guys know East South Georgia and Carolina and Waffles. And. Maybe we need my three ducklies right now. The thing is, is you can't really tell them apart. And so until, that's why we named Annie and Hallie those. Yes, I know my little sister's name is Hallie, but the twins off the parent trap, Annie and Hallie, that's why we named them that. How's it going? Like sanding them up won't get you a foot closer? No. Can you straighten that one out to be a foot? I don't know. I might be able to. Oh, all the 
duckies are going down to the pond. Bye, duckies. <laughs> so why we did this is to give them all this lush green grass right there. Actually, this at first I thought was going to be horrible. All of this great, like, tree stuff. Like, old posts and everything that we've ripped out of our yard. But to be honest with you, it's actually really nice because the goats use it as like a jungle gym. So you'll see Zan like up there pretending he's Mufasa, which is pretty cool. Um, I have some news. So our baby goats, well, our goats, East South Georgia and Carolina, they're pregnant. Oh, hi, Emerald. And with that, we're expecting babies. Now, Zan isn't the friendliest goat, even to other animals. And I think that has a large part to do with he was a one-man show with him. It was, the, it was the Wild West out here with Goose and the neighbor's horse and Zan. Like, they ran everything. Eh, even Sean. So, it was the Wild West. And now that these two goats are having their babies, we're like, well, how do we keep the baby safe from Zan? And all that kind of stuff. So, guys, Crandall wants to use my she shed as a shelter for the goats. He said, Marcy, you're not really using your she shed right now, so. Which I'm not, because we just built our kitchen and I haven't moved anything into it. Well, I mean, there's a few of Maverick's outside toys in it. And a chair. And he's like, let's use your she shed as our goat thing. I'm so sad. Uh, it's whatever, but at the same time, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to decide to use it or if he's not going to use it. But he wants to put the goat in there so that they have a little bit better of a shelter and that they can get away from Zan. What do you guys think? Do I do I give him my she shed that, to be honest, did not cost us anything besides paint? And so, like, it was free. It's not very good. I mean, it is good. He made it so it doesn't leak. But, like... There's not a really secure door on it. So it's not like I'm really missing out on a ton. But what do you think? Do I give him the she shed to have the goats in? Or do we build something for the goats? <laughs> right now that's what they have. But like all of them try to get in there. And I just don't think it's big enough. Or when these babies, like we need to be able to give it power and heat and things if the babies need it. So... What do you think? Let me know. Are we secure? Yeah. He's just having me stand in here. I didn't really even have to do anything. I think if you would have just fed them, the only one I had to back up was Zan. Now I gotta figure out how to get out of here. So, let's go. Okay, Crandall said to push them all over here to see if they'll like it. Ew, this way. Come on, Waffles. What? He pulls out food as I'm trying to be a shepherd? This will be way easier. With my shepherd tuck. Work smarter, not harder, Mar. Come on, everybody. Come see your new house. Okay, your new grass. Come on. Wow, Crandall. Look at all this trash they uncovered. I know. Well, those branches flew down and they're going to town on it. This ground out here is really soft. I just want them to eat all this down, eat, you know, because they stripped that. They stripped plate, that. Which is great. Well, and then we can even move them a little that way, too. Well, that's what I want to do. Next year, in the spring, what I want to do is kind of set up, like, 
some big rectangles down in the woods like where I'll get the excavator or the skid steer and actually like just clear a path, clear a path, clear a path and kind of square it off in sections. So then we can through the year just move, 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 move. Yeah. And move them around. Pretty soon here, we are actually gonna move them all out of this area and we'll probably build the whole pen like on this whole pasture. And then we'll keep them there for the winter. Cause what I wanna do is we are gonna rebuild this pond, I'm not sure when, but I wanna plant a whole bunch of wheat and rye grass and that will produce food all and forage all through the winter for them. I was just gonna say today, we need to plant some winter wheat. That's what we planted our grass in last no, winter. No, that was um, rye grass. We need to plant some rye grass so that even out here, just to throw some seeds and stuff, yeah. so that they can eat I've heard some rye of that. grass is really good for the livestock and stuff to eat through the winter because it oh, stays Oh, look at Domino, he's getting ready to puff up. Well, he's hot, so he's taking his, open his wings up. But. Man, they won't even come over here. They know where the old boundary is. Come here. Come here. Oh, here they go. Come here. She's like, no. Come on. Look at her. Won't even make it past the first three feet. They might all get shoved, though, right here. That's funny. I think they'll slowly, now that they found that grass right there, though, oh, they're going to wander. <laughs> We gotta put new water in their pool. Yeah, I need I need to clean out all of their waters. Oh yeah, good job, Domino. <laughs> they're like I, I in heaven. Almost, I don't think they're gonna strip this. I think it's gonna keep raining through the fall, obviously, and I think this is enough room now that it's just gonna green up faster than they can eat it. Which is good. Which is good. That's what you want. But. Well, and that's over there. Like you can already see it's starting to green up, and yeah. they haven't ate through it. Like three weeks ago when it greened up just this month they ate through it in two days yeah but i love that they stripped all of the leaves off of all of those plants because all of those are trash um what are they called willow not willow um just trash trees just trash trees i can't remember the name of them but uh oh wing down they're wing down trees and then the thistle trees oh so that's sweet to through. see the pond like well, actually how like, big it is what i was gonna say is i'm gonna come through maybe to later today or tomorrow or something and just bring my chainsaw and cut off all of the little stuff because that's all going to get burned and get trashed because obviously we can't have that around the new pond. We got to restart. It's really windy. It's good. It's good. It's good. And the chain feels really nice. You never told me your chainsaw's broken. It is. I, I need to get a new blade and track for the blade. All right, y'all. You guys like it? Okay. I'll get all full so we don't This have gives to... them a little bit more space to have their babies. I was going to take this out of here. I need to clean it up a little bit. I was going to take it out of here, but I figured, hey, you know, we only have the one shelter right now, so this gives... Well, we have the one and then the dog kennel Oh, yeah, thing. the dog kennel for, like, uh, that's the where Emerald usually lays her eggs, but this will be good. This is another little one. And then, like you heard Marcy say, I think I'm going to steal her she shed for the mamas. <laughs> Oh, there they go. Good job. <laughs> Did you show them their udders and stuff? Oh, I didn't. I don't know if you can get it. They don't like you to be behind them because that's where predators attack from. So they'll probably just... Here, you grab the phone and I'll try to stay over here. So if any of you guys are professional goat people, can anybody tell us how close we might be to having babies based off the udders? Yeah. Yeah, Goose is in the truck. Still? Still. Yeah, he was sleeping. I mean, it's probably pretty hot in there. No, it's in the shade and the windows are open. Well, he's just in the front seat. Well, he can get out if he wants. The door's open. Oh. So, there's the three goats, obviously, you guys know. But yeah, their udders are filling up. They were completely, completely dry. I don't know what, like um, three weeks ago? I think three weeks ago is when you came to me and said the first one was just I don't remember which one was first. I'm guessing Carolina or Southeast Georgia is the brown one, right? I think Southeast Georgia is the brown one. <laughs> I get them mixed up. Um, I think she filled up first and hers looks a little bit fuller than this one. Well, she looks a little bit bigger too. But if you guys could be twins, it would just be our luck. Yeah. Look who decided to join the party. He went and took a bath, didn't he?
Well, I have to say, I think it's a success. They're going to definitely uh, grace this down and absolutely love it. And uh, I'm excited to give them a little bit more space. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We're going to keep you guys updated on the baby situation. Like I said, if you guys have any ideas or guesses, leave them down in the comments of how long till you think those babies are having babies. And like I said, if y'all aren't subscribed to Camera Ran Ron's YouTube channel, go over there, subscribe to his channel, check it out, and let him know that the Elder Tram sent you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see y'all on the next video.